Hi friends, I'm Abby and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Foundryside trilogy by Robert Jackson Bennett and a should you read, should you read this trilogy. So the first book being Foundryside, the second one, Shawfall, and the third and latest one, Lachlan's. Uh, so this series is now complete. And I thought I would share my thoughts on the trilogy as a whole and whether I think other people should read it and if this series is going to be for you or not. Uh, I do actually have a series review on Robert Jackson Bennett's other series, The Divine Cities, if you're interested in checking that out as well, I can link that. But diving into this series, I'll split this up into a few parts. So I'll talk about the plot and the characters, a little bit about the writing style, uh, a little bit how I felt about the progression of the trilogy as a whole and my overall thoughts on the trilogy. And then a sort of, if you like this, I think you should read the series, but if you are not a fan of these things, then maybe this series isn't gonna be for you. So that's what we have coming. Foundry side, where it all starts off. Uh, I read this a few years ago and I fell in love with it. I loved this first book in the series. Uh, you are following a uh, main character, Sansia, and at the beginning of the book, she uh, is given a task to uh, steal a object of extreme value. Uh, she is a thief and she's like, great, I'm gonna get a lot of money out of this. I can leave my way of life and get out of the city of Tavan, in which this is set and create a new life for herself with the money that she was gonna get from this heist, uh, except, things go a little bit awry and think, yeah, it doesn't all go to plan. Uh, in this world, there is a hard magic system in which objects are scribed to believe that they could be something else. So for example, wheels are scribed to believe that they're always going downhill when in fact they could be going uphill so that they can maintain their momentum. Or like walls are scribed to be stronger than they are, that they may be made out of a weaker substance than stone, but they're scribed to believe that they are stone. So a very interesting magic system, like real world coding. That's the, the setup for the series. And I really liked this first book. You dive you straight in, you're following Sansia right at the beginning of this heist. And then you get to explore what happens next. It's quite political in some ways that there are these ruling families within this city uh, and seeing them and their. So if you enjoy seeing politics within uh, a fantasy world, I did really, really enjoy that and seeing the different machinations that are going on between the ruling merchant families. And the characters I really, really liked as well. For something that's very, very fast paced, I got very attached to the characters uh, in this world and in this series that there's Sansia, there's Clef, and the multiple people that they meet and befriend along the way in their journey and adventures. I would say that if you do get attached to characters, then I believe that it's very easy to get attached to these characters. I will say that I do think in all of them, all the books in this trilogy are very fast paced, that they're very, they're very action heavy, that there is definitely a lot of action. Uh, so it's an action heavy, but also, I did get very attached to the characters. A bit of a, not, not a weird mix, but like an interesting mix, because sometimes in a fast paced story, which is quite plot heavy, you don't necessarily get attached to the characters, but I felt like I did in this, uh, that I was very attached to them. It, 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 there is definitely a lot of action through these books, that there is a lot going on, that they are, yeah, I would definitely, if you are reading them, maybe read them back to back, because there is a lot that happens in each of the books. There is a lot to, to get your head around. But if you, if you haven't, read them back to back like I didn't. Uh, Sophia at Sophia's Thoughts has done a recap for each of the, well not each of the books, she's not done a recap for Lockland's, but she's done a recap for Foundryside and Shawfall, recapping with spoilers the books for if you, if it's been a while since you've read them before diving, if you want to, if you want to watch them before diving into Lockland's. So my thoughts on this, on the progression of this trilogy and how this went. So Foundryside for me was five stars. I loved this one. This one, I, I think, is my favourite. Still, like, out of the trilogy, I think Foundryside is my favourite. I have read this one twice, uh, as opposed to just once for these other two, that this one has had the, the reread. But I do think this one's my favourite, because this is where I fell in love with this world and these characters. Um, and then I did really, really like Shawfall as well. Uh, I will say that there, is, there are time gaps between each of the books in the series. Uh, so I know that some people like a time jump, some people don't but there is a time drop. I think it's done well between these two, um, that I think it was realistic to for the progression of the politics within Tavan and seeing how it 
has grown over time i think i enjoy i enjoyed the time jump here uh, and seeing what has developed between the characters so this one again i think i, I preferred parent type i think i gave this like a 4.5 stars and then Lachlan's I didn't enjoy so much unfortunately that for me this one was more like a three stars. I do still think that it's a very good series but it is my easily my least favourite within the trilogy which is really really unfortunate because I do I like it in, when a whole series like it ends on a high when it sticks the landing and unfortunately for me this one didn't quite stick the landing for me. Uh, for me it felt as though Robert Jackson Bennett had his ending he knew where he was getting to um, but he wasn't too sure on the journey to get to this end destination in this final book. Now, some of that might be because I did have quite a gap between reading these two and this one that I read Shaw for pretty much when it came out and it's been, I guess, about two years until uh, the release of Loglands. But I do think it's a very different tone to these first two books. Uh, these first two are more insular within the city of Tavern, whereas in this one, you do get some more world expansion and you do again have that time jump and for me, the time jump was just a little bit too much, I'd say, that it was a bit too, made it a little bit unrealistic, that it felt like quite a different story going into this book. And maybe I wasn't quite prepared for that difference in tone and story. Although like definitely still the same writing style, I just am the same characters in some ways, but it it was definitely a step away from these two to, to this one. Uh, and I'd say as well, like it becomes a lot more genre blending in that these ones are definitely lean de are definitely more like on the fantasy whereas it starts to become a little bit more sci-fi in this third and final book so my ordering of them uh, with my favorite being foundry side then shawfall then Lockland, literally in the uh, reading order although i do think that shawfall is quite close to foundry side for a roundup on if you're on the fence on if you should read this trilogy or not i think if you enjoy a fast-paced action heavy uh, trilogy then I'd recommend it like if you want to fly through something I think this is a good series for that if you if you're a little bit slumpy uh, and although these are quite chunky I think you can very easily fly through them but they are pretty compulsively readable I would say that if you enjoy like a fun heist type plot uh, that these are very very fun there are some serious topics in there like there's definitely some like larger world building that is definitely some more serious topics in terms of slavery and grief and hardships that people go through but overall i think these are quite fun the characters and the dynamic of the characters like if you enjoy seeing like a, a crew or a group of characters that come together uh, from different aspects of life then i think this would work um and as well if you enjoy like a hard magic system that is very much a big part of the story that this magic system and the way that the world is built around this magic system is a very big part of this trilogy. So if you enjoy having magic at the forefront of your books, then I'd recommend it as well. Also, I would say that if you like characters that are not necessarily good, that there's lots of gray morality uh, in this, that you can't necessarily tell who is good and who is bad, or if these people are actually good or bad, if they're just gray. Uh, there is a lot of um, discussions over, yeah, morality in this. However, I don't think this will work if you enjoy a slow paced narrative. But if you're wanting something slow, methodical with a large amount of world building, a lot of this, particularly in these first two books, is focused on this one city in Tavan. So you don't have necessarily a very expansive world. If you are more interested in like world building with loads and loads of different characters all over a world, then that's not going to be this. And, and it is very, very fast paced. So if you do like a slow, yeah, a slower narrative, then this I don't think would work for you because it is very action heavy. That it is go, go, go pretty much from the get go. And also if you are not a fan of time jumps, that there are that, that, oh, that there are time jumps between each of the books. I do think that between these two, it worked. Uh, between Shaw and Lockman's, it didn't work so well for me. But I know that pe some people can be quite funny with time jumps that they can like them. Or some people really hate them, that they'd rather not have them in a trilogy. So depending on how you feel about time jumps, then uh, that can also be a swaying factor on if I think this series would be for you or not. So there are my thoughts and a quick should you read on the Foundry Side trilogy by Robert Jackson Bennett. Uh, I would say go, go for it. If it sounds interesting to you, then go for it, uh, particularly because I would say that Foundry Side and Shawfall are just amazing, amazing books. And I do think that I am satisfied, I'm really, I'm satisfied with the way that it ended. And I'm very happy that I've read this trilogy, despite being a little bit disappointed in Lockland as a whole. I 
would still definitely recommend this trilogy like it hasn't it wouldn't stop me from recommending it just because i feel as though the first two books are the stronger of the three so thank you so much for watching uh let me know if i have persuaded you or if you agree with my opinions on this trilogy and thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my future videos bye